All right. Welcome to sunny Florida. If you're not from our local area, you're from out of state, and I know a lot of you are, this is a great city, and we welcome you here. There's a lot of great things for your families to do, but right now, you're here, and this is business, and I applaud you for being here. Lee had a lot of great information about Google and the internet, and hopefully you'll hear uh, uh, some good information from me as well, and uh, the other speakers here today. I know a lot of this information hits you like deer in the headlights, because this is not the fun part of your business. This is the business part of your business. My wife Donna and I have a son named Ben. He's a voice and performance coach over in Tampa. And he's a very good one. A lot of integrity in the business. He does a couple of national judging uh, sessions each year. And he says, you know, I love what I do. But I hate the business of my business. And that's a lot of us. Two or three years ago, I came dragging and screaming into the digital world. My wife sat me down, and I, she said, you got to get a Facebook account. And I said, no, I don't. And I know a lot of people that are that way. And one day she comes in, and she says, do me a favor. She says, type in this in your uh, search. Uh, do a www.face. And before I knew it, I was signing up for Facebook. And the rest is history. And it's very important that I did, because as much as we don't want to face the business part of our business, our clients do. That's where you want to be. You want to be where your clients are. This isn't as much fun as building a race car or going to the races or talking races. But if you don't take care of the business part of your business, you won't have a business. And we're going to go over that a little bit today. And uh, we've got the power of email marketing. Now, like Dan said, we take care, we do a lot with email, mobile, and social media. I'm going to throw out some information today that I hope you're able to catch and take back with you to your homes and your businesses and hit a home run with it. Because this is a very, very important part of your business and it has to do with your clients. That's me. Every way basically you can contact me. And like uh, Dan said, I started our business in 1996 primarily towards customer service. It's before basically computers and all this stuff was out there. But uh, customer service has been the backbone of many businesses and successful businesses since the beginning of time. What we're going to talk about today basically has three parts. We want to show you how email marketing, you can connect to build your customer relationships, which is what we all want to do, building relationships. We want to inform the people. Let them know what you do, what kind of products you have, what kind of services you have. And grow your business. That's the key, is using a lot of this information that you're gathering today to take back and grow your business. Now, we've got a lot of information to cover today. I'm going to try to keep it all within my time. I know my wife tells me when I talk Texan, I have a tendency to slow down a little bit. So if anybody needs a translator, just let me know. But we'll try to get through this and get you some information. Email marketing basis, number one is connect. You want to connect with your customers and your prospects. Now your customers and prospects, and let, let me just mention this. In the next three or four days, you're gonna have the opportunity to meet thousands of people. What are you gonna do with that? The next month will determine what you do with all that information and all these people's names and email addresses that you have. Now, I'll touch a little bit more on it in a minute, but as you go through the next few days, you need to gather every name, every email address that you can get. Now, you may say, well, there's somebody in this booth that's got promotional products, 
I don't need that. I don't need that person's name and information in my database. I have somebody back in my hometown that does that for me. That's great. But if you start, as we will talk about in a minute, and start marketing using email marketing, that person across the country that does promotional products that was here has an interest in being here with the racing industry. They may have a brother that's on the other side of the country that they know could use your services or your product. Everybody is a potential customer or referral. So you want to build your database as much as you can and use that. Where will the majority of the next month's business come from? Your existing customers. What's the best source for new customers? Your existing customers. You want to keep your name and information in front of those existing customers. You want to take real good care of them because those are the people that are going to take care of you. Engagement marketing is usually using technology to make it happen. Email marketing, social media, Google, YouTube, everything you can use to make your business successful, you've got to use it today because that's where your clients are. Three steps to building relationships. You've got email marketing, social media marketing. Those work together. When you send out, let's say, an, an email newsletter, which is going to be the most common thing that you send out, is going to be a monthly newsletter to keep your name and your company and your industry in front of your clients. With that, you need a place on your newsletters for people to opt in, for people to share with other people. You've got a great customer experience. The customers connect. They refer other people. And that enables you to start creating dialogue with people that is out of your sphere of influence or your immediate sphere of influence. They recommend you to their friends, and those friends recommend. Your prospects that, ah, man, their dream is to build a race car, but they're just not there yet. But they want all the information they can get. Those are good prospects for you. You want to stay in front of those people and find out who they are. There's probably going to be a lot of them right here in the next three or four days that they, they work for a company, they're an uh, hourly employee, and their dream is to build a race car, and they're putting all of their information together to do that. So what you want to do is build that relationship with everyone that you come across. There's five types of people. We've got our raving fans. These people, you know them, they hang around the shop, they're there all the time, they talk, they, want, they go out and talk to people, about, they're almost stalkers. You've got your regular customers, can't do without them, they're great people, they're going to refer you. You have prospects, these are the people I was just talking about, they're going to refer you as well because they want to, they want to promote you because they're promoting the industry and they have their own dream. And you got some suspects out there. They're not too sure about you. They're not too sure about this business. But they're interested. They're still listening. And then you've got the people that are disinterested that just don't give a darn. And we don't give a darn about them either. That's not our, our, that's not our people that, that we're looking for. We're looking for the raving fan to influence other friends and families and people of the, to our industry where they turn suspects and prospects into customers. Acquiring new customers. This takes a lot of effort, energy, and money. Our existing customers, we build relationships with them, we take care of them, and they're going to be there. To get new customers is going to take approximately seven touches to get that new customer on a normal basis. Whether they see your name on the side of your company truck, 
They see an ad you've run in a newspaper or magazine or periodical. They found you on the internet. Then all of a sudden, one day, it's like, you know, I'm ready to do this. I'm going to call the person that I've seen that uh, on a regular basis, they've been around. They haven't gone away. They're still there. So I think they're going to be there for a while, and I want to do some business with them. You want to keep those customers coming back. You want to build, like I say, that relationship. You've already paid to get that customer. So you want to keep them on board. It's six to seven times more expensive to gain a customer than it is to keep one. So when you get them, you take care of them. You let them know how you uh, appreciate their business. They are your referral engine. They're the one that's going to send you more business in the future. Remember that slide that says, where's your next customer coming from? It's your existing customers. They're the, your word of mouth referral is your most powerful customer that you can build. Why email? Because that's where everybody's at. Everybody's on email and Facebook and social media to pass along that information. When we get up in the morning, what's your name, sir? Ron. Ron? Ron, when you get up in the morning and you sit down in front of the computer, what's the first thing you do? <laughs> check your email. And Facebook. When you check your email, what's the first thing we all do? We clean it up. You go through it, and you're hitting delete, 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 delete. Ah, there's one. Delete, delete. Now there's another one. Delete, delete. And we end up, we've deleted all this spam and trash, and we've got anywhere from 5 to 15 or 20 emails that we want to go back and check and read and follow up on. We're going to try to show you today how to be that email they don't delete. Because if they delete your email, I don't care how much time you spend on a, on a newsletter or presentation, if they don't open it, hadn't done you a bit of good. 61% of the people use social networking sites. 147 million, million people across the country use email every day. So it's something, as much as we get kind of perturbed with it, with all the spam and everything else, it's still the most powerful tool for marketing our business, especially to our current clients, and to keep that relationship growing. Why email? It's cost effective. Direct mail versus email the difference in the expense is tremendous. But don't discount direct mail. It still has a viable audience. It's still a good marketing tool. But if you get one, two, three percent return, you're doing good. If you're going to an event, and I'll just use this example because it's, it's racing history. If you're going to do an event in Daytona, and you want to do a direct mail piece within three or four zip codes around the racetrack, or even in that city, that's going to be important. But you don't want to do a direct mail piece somewhere else. But email marketing, you can shoot out an email across the country. You can shoot out an email targeting those people. And it's going to be pennies on the dollar for the results that you get. The return on the investment is the highest with email marketing. Email marketing is not spam. And that's what we want to try to stay away from, and we'll try to teach you a little bit about how to do that. Email marketing is delivering professional communications to an interested audience with information that they think is important and is relevant. Not necessarily what you think is important. You've got to think when you're putting out this newsletter, okay, what topics or my customers interested in this month? What can I put out there that's going to get their attention? So you want to put out an email that's got a professional email, a professional look to an interested audience with information that they think is important. With your basic email marketing, you want to set expectations. You want to deliver on your promises. You want to abide by the Can Spam Act, and you want to utilize professional services. 
Part of those professional services is with an email service provider like Constant Contact. And I'll tell you right now, we represent Constant Contact. We've been customers since 2005. My wife and Royal Support Services and my wife is an award-winning trainer with Constant Contact. We love them. We think they're the standard in the industry. I do want to say there's other companies out there from MailMonkey, iContact, other companies that are good service providers. And what I'm trying to convey to you here today will work with any of these service providers. It doesn't have to be constant contact. We just prefer that it would be constant contact. You've got standard email programs. You've got a limited number of emails that you can send out with somebody like an Outlook or Hotmail or Yahoo and you have no formatting control. Your list breakup is more susceptible to filters. And there's no way to track your results. Now we all know one of the best ways of tracking our results for our general business is, is there more money coming in? There more money going out? As long as I've got that, I'm doing good. But let's say you're making $10,000 a month profit. You got a small shop. You're doing good. Feel good. Your wife's happy. You build good things. Or your husband, if we've got some female gear jammers out here. But what happens, what would it be like if you could tweak that marketing a little bit? Tweak your emails by tracking them. Make a couple of changes. And all of a sudden, man, you're making $20,000 profit a month. You don't know until you start tracking it. And we'll get into that a little bit more here in a little bit. This is your basic email checklist. This is one time I'm just going to read them. Do repeat and referral customers help your business? Do you have a plan for delivering multiple communications? Is your audience interested in your message? Is it valuable to them? Can you make your emails look professional and reflect your brand? Do you have an email service provider to manage your strategy? That last one's very important. It's what I was talking about. If you try to use Yahoo, email, Hotmail, send it out. Number one, it's going to be all text. There's not going to be anything that looks pretty about it. It's just strictly information. Building a quality email list. You want to connect with the people and you want to keep your list current. You don't want to spam people. You start spamming people, they're going to get ticked off in a hurry. First of all, you hope they just unsubscribe rather than classify you as spam. Make sure the important thing about building your list is that it's permission-based. Permission-based emails are very important. It keeps you from getting classified as spam. In an, in an environment like we're in the next few days, you've got two different types of permission. You've got explicit information. If I ask Dan or John, hey, can I add you to my VIP email list and just send you out a per periodical uh, announcement of my company and what we're doing? I say, sure. That's explicit permission. Implicit permission are when you're in an environment like you are this weekend or this week, and you're going through, this, you're going through the convention center you're looking at all the displays and exhibitors and you're getting business cards. For that person to be in this environment and to put their cards out there for everybody to take, that's basically saying, hey, I'm here to do business with whoever I can do business with and that's implicit inf uh, permission to put them in your database and do it. Build that database as big as you can build it. It's where a lot of people like Yahoo and uh, Google and some others actually have a place you can hit and classify somebody as spam. And uh, that's not good for them. But being with an a email service provider helps keep that from happening because they're going to get a single email. They're going to get 
you're not going to get that whole list of names at the top of an email that you see sometime. And by golly, you don't want your name to be in one of those either. Because that's where a lot of people steal names and information to spam you in the future. This is one of the most important slides, I think, in the whole presentation. This is your customer and prospect database. For the person in your office that's taking incoming calls, you want them to ask everybody on that phone for their name and your email, email address. Keep building that database. Events and meetings like this. When you go home and you've got 1,000 business cards or 500 business cards, that's business. You either have to sit down and log all those in. This might be where you get your kids to help out. Let them earn their allowance. Find somebody that can enter all that information, and it just needs to be really and truly their name and the email address. And it could be even just the email address. But that's building your database. In your emails, have your email in a way for people to opt in. Place of business guest book. If you have a retail operation where people can come in off the street, have a sign-in book and make sure that you or whoever is manning that desk ask everybody to sign in and ask them if you can add them to your VIP database. Online presence in your Facebook timeline page. I didn't see one a while ago. It doesn't mean it's not there. But even with PRI Racing, in your timeline page, you need to have a button there where people can opt in to our database. Keep building Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever you're on. On your website, have an opt-in button where people can join your database. This, ladies and gentlemen, is your business, your customers, and your prospects. That's the most important asset that you have. If you don't have customers and you don't have prospects, you don't have a business. You've got a hobby. So take care of your customers, but build your database. That's going to help build your customer base. You see here when you've got social media, you can put an opt-in button. I'm sorry, I keep putting down here. It's up here. <laughs> but you have the opt-in button there. It's the little uh, constant contact logo where people can opt in. This happens to be our timeline page where people can opt in to our database. Make a join my mailing list button. Make sure there's social media on the site. Collecting the information and permission. Always include your logo in everything you do. That is your branding. And don't change it. Keep it consistent. People trust a logo and a name and the colors of the companies they know. You don't see Coca-Cola changing theirs every now and then. Or Nike. They keep it consistent. And that's what you want to do as well. You can change the body. You've got the holidays coming up. You can put Christmas trees, picture of Santa, you know, Christmas lights. But that logo that's up there, you want to keep consistent. You want to describe your email and content and how often you're going to be sending it when you're telling people that you're going to add them to the da database. You also want to find out what their interests are. Are they interested in drag racing, sports car racing? What type of building engines? You want to find out what their interests are. And when you do this, it's one of the other things you can do with an email service provider is do surveys. Ask people a couple times a year what you're interested in. What would you like to hear about? You also want to ask them, what can we do to help service you better? Your customers will tell you how you can improve. That's very important. 
when you're doing things for four or five years and you're doing it the same way and you never change, your customers may change. And, and you might see business dropping off a little bit. Man, you need to find out what's happening. Survey your existing customers and ask how you can improve what you're doing for them. And ask additional information when necessary. But this is finding out from your customers what you need to change. Another great thing about email service providers is you have the opportunity to do what's called an autoresponder. That means when somebody, even on your website, so I'm going to, I want to get more information about this company on a regular basis to see what's happening. So they join your list. When they join your list, a welcome letter automatically goes out to them. I mean, how's that? You know? You want, yes, sir. We'll, we'll get to that in just a minute. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. You're on page six, and I'm on page two. Oh, okay. <laughs> but we'll get there. But yeah, that's perfect. And social media comes into that. Okay, and we'll go over that in just a little bit. But appreciate it. And if you would, hold your questions till the end, and we'll get to those at the end. But you want to personalize your message, reinforce the permission. You've got down at the bottom... And it's a good thing. It's what we talked about a while ago when I said you hope people, if they don't want to get your information anymore, they unsubscribe rather than classify you as spam. You always want to put a place on your emails to safely unsubscribe. This is important. Now, I can handle it okay. My wife hates it when somebody unsubscribes from her emails. She is just hurt. How could anybody not want my information? Don't take it personally, folks. They might have moved away. They might have a new spouse that doesn't like racing. You know, but for whatever reason, don't take it as an offense. Sending a welcome email, everything you send out, again, you want to include your logo and your brand identity. If, for some reason, you get with a designer and decide to create a different logo. You want a new look. Maybe you've had that same logo for 20 years. That might be an asset because that shows longevity and that shows consistency and integrity in the business. But if your business is really falling off and you think, man, I need to jack it up a little bit. I need, I need a new look. I need a, a new message. If you do it, may blast it out there. Do it big time. Media, email, your website, everywhere you get a chance. Chambers of Commerce, whatever your local business is, you've got to make it big because you're changing. But even when you change, don't waver. Keep it consistent from then on and don't be changing it. We had a customer not too long ago, it's very artistic, they sent out an email, oh, this looks really good. Next month, we got an email, their logo was different and colors were different. Well, maybe they changed. Next month, their newsletter had another different color logo on it. They thought they were being creative. But what they were doing was shooting themselves in the foot because they weren't consistent. People didn't know who they were. Is this the same person that sent me that newsletter last week? So keep your branding, keep your branding the same. Ask for confirmation on certain emails. Ask them to reply. Maybe it's an event and you want an RSVP. But you also want to confirm, have a confirmation link where you confirm the subscription. This is another type of reminder or a welcome letter that could be sent out. It's an information that you basically gave us permission to send you this email. You want to keep your list current. Another thing we'll do here in, towards the end when we get into the growth part of email marketing and growing your business is being able to track things. We'll go into that a little bit more. But keeping your list current, 
when you're tracking it, it'll show you who bounces and who doesn't. You want to keep, there again, your logo, your look, and everything consistent. You want to provide, if you're doing an email, provide a link to your website where people can go and see everything that you're doing. Ask yourself as you build your list, are you doing all these things on a regular basis? Are you clearly describing your email frequency and content? Are you using permission and subscription reminders? Number two, you want to inform people. Determine what's valuable to your audience. Maybe you got a big race coming up the next week, and that's one of the things you want to concentrate on. And you want to ch choose the right format. Now, you choose a format like this. I'm sorry, man, I keep pointing down here. You want to choose the right format because all this information, this, this email newsletter has the same information on it that a plain text email would have, but it looks good, looks professional. You want to have the value for your audience. You want to promote your business, you want to relate to people, and you want to give them knowledge. Now, out of that, promoting your business should be 10, 10 to 20%. That could be a coupon, it could be a monthly special. It could be a special benefit for signing up for a new event or the newsletter. The rest of it should be information and relationship building. You don't want to be saying sell, 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 or buy, buy, buy all the time. You want to have the right social content. You want to make sure everybody knows where you are, how to reach you. Give them an opportunity to join your Facebook timeline page. You want to hold contests and giveaways. But basically, the most important thing is to acknowledge your customers and your prospect. Keep your name in front of them. They may buy a racing engine from you one year, and they're ready to do it again the next year. But you want to make sure they see you once a month or keep your name in front of them so they don't forget about you. You want to keep your name and information out there to communicate with them on a regular basis. When you have large bodies of content, if you've got a big article that you want to put on your newsletter, don't put that whole article there. You want to put the title, a couple of sentences maybe, and read more. Click here to read more. See more here to where they can click and go to it. Use bullets. Use summaries, use quick things, keep it simple or you're going to lose them. You determine the appropriate format. There again, we're talking about newsletters. We can talk about Christmas cards coming up. Make a beautiful Christmas card you can send out. A promotion, special event, a survey. There again, there's a lot of different tools that we have with an email service provider that you don't have with standard email. You want to brand your emails consistently. We talked about that. Keep your logo the same. Keep your colors the same. Be consistent. But on everything we do, on your Facebook page, whether it be Google+, Constant Contact, your Facebook, your website, have calls to action. Call me now. Call for more information. Email me. Make it where you can click a button and it happens. They don't have to key in a number. They don't have to key in an email. They click this button and they can shoot you an email. So have calls to action. And you can describe the benefits of everything you do. They should have links to click on, information to print out, phone numbers to call. Describe the immediate benefits. What's in it for you? Everybody that we talk to are salesmen that comes into your place of business trying to sell you something. Everything, now that salesman is trying to make a dollar. But a lot of them, most of them, have products that we could actually use and can benefit our businesses. But your whole, whole thought process is what's in it for me. So let your audience know what's in it for them and describe the immediate benefits. 
How often do I send it? With a newsletter, I don't recommend any more than once a month. You're going to get people that, now if you want to do a newsletter, then two weeks later do a survey or announce a promotion, announce an event, that's fine. But as far as a constant email, uh, every, every now and then, I would recommend once a month. Glad the elections were over because I was getting them, you know, you were getting certain emails two or three times a day from certain people. And that's when it's spam and you don't want to see that. When to send it? There's been surveys done. Monday, or Tuesdays and Wednesdays are your best day. Between 10 and 3. Okay, that information came out a year or so ago. Now then everybody gets emails on Tuesdays and Wednesdays between 10 and 3. That may work for you. And it may not. When you start building your database and you start f figuring out how often to send it, you may want to split your database up into a couple. Send one out at 10 o'clock in the morning, one out at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. See if it makes a difference. See how many people open one over the other. But you might have to tweak it. You might have to work with it. Just find out what works the best. This is your email checklist. You want to go over these things before you send your email. You want to make sure that it's right before you hit that send button. And when you get ready to hit that send button, send one to you first. Take a look at it. You're going back, oh man, I got three misspelled words here. You can go back and correct those before you send it out to your whole database. So always send yourself a trial email first. Second, we want to inform people. We want to get your email delivered and read. You've got filters out there. You got subject lines. Using different technology to send your emails out is very important. Deliverability issues, you've got image blocking. You've got friends and people that are on there maybe with bad email lists or bad email addresses. The from line, there's two particular things in getting your email open that's the most important. The from line, and you want to keep that as consistent as your logo. If it's from Dan, Power Racing Industry, you want to have Dan slash Power Racing Industry. And he wants to use that on every email he sends out. Because you're going to know who it is, who it's from, and you're comfortable with it. You know who it's from. If he said, had his secretary do it, and it said Susie at gmail.com, you're probably going to delete it because you don't know who Susie from gmail.com is. So keep that consistent. The from line, you use similar, similar email addresses and keep, keep there again, keep that as consistent. I think I need to speed it up here a little bit. Subject line, that's number two. If you create this fabulous newsletter, it's gorgeous. It's got great content, it's got the bullet points, it's got some links to click to. If nobody opens it up, it's not going to do you a darn bit of good. So your from line and the subject line are the two most important things of getting your email opened. That's the one when everybody's clicking through going delete, 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 and they don't delete this one, that helps you be the one that doesn't get deleted. Keep it short, keep it sweet. And you avoid spam speak. You don't use too many all capital letters. You don't use exclamation marks. You don't do free or free credit or no credit. A lot of these things are spam speak and the little spiders out there and uh, all the algorithms will find those and possibly block yours. Also, it's, a, it's one of the things that a lot of big companies that have good firewalls will block things like that. So. Keep your subject line, and in your subject line, don't put monthly newsletter. That's no good either. Don't put October newsletter. Find something in that newsletter that's important and interesting and put that in your subject line. That, along with your from line, will keep you consistent. This is what I was talking about a while ago, sir. When you're using somebody like Constant Contact, and you get ready to do your, send your email. 
It gives you the option to social share. And this is where at the top bar up there, when you send your email out, the recipient has the opportunity to share it with their Facebook friends, with their Twitter friends, with their LinkedIn. That increases the number in your database exponentially. That makes it go, if you've got a thousand people in your database, that might make it where if 10 people, just 10 people share this email, you could also be going out to 10,000 people, 20,000 people, depending on how many people are in their database. And a lot of those people in their database, if they're friends of yours, they may have racing as an interest as well. It might be a passion of theirs too. So make your content shareable. Tweet and share your email. And this is your delivery checklist. Things you want to do before you hit that send button. Is your from line familiar? Does your subject line include immediate benefits in your email? Now you want to grow your business. We've got connect, we've got inform, now you want to grow. This is the important part we were talking about a while ago. The most important part of that growing is tracking your results. Your tracking and reporting is very important. You can see in this example, I believe they sent out about 300 and something emails. They had like 65 opens. And it'll tell you how many people clicked through, how many people forwarded that email. And they will tell you the only thing they don't tell you is the name and person that classifies you as spam. They keep that private. They, they want to keep that person safe. But when you, somebody forwards your email, you will see who forwarded it. That might be an opportunity for you to contact them and say thanks for forwarding our email. Appreciate it. Uh, do you, wanna, you might want to send them a 10% discount coupon for forwarding the email. There's a lot of marketing opportunities in this tracking. It'll tell you how many people bounced. If you've got an abnormal number of emails bouncing, and especially if you've got some key people in there that you know are good clients or whatever, you might definitely want to contact them and see if you've got a current email address for them that's not out of date. Maybe they've changed their email and it's bounced. This is a good indicator also of how clean your list is. You can have somebody that's an hourly employee contact a lot of these people and just make sure you've got a good email address for them. Measure your, in, your overall increases in your, in your research for what you're doing. Your social, social stats, how many people shared it, how many people liked it. This goes back to using that social share at the top. It'll actually give you a number in your database and in your tracking of how many shares, how many people shared it, how many people clicked through on, an, on a link how many people read a certain article. When you get 10 people or 15 people that read a circle, certain article, they're interested in that. That might be something that you really want to key in on next time or send them a separate email about that particular topic and how you can help them with that topic. You want to analyze your open rates, open the tracking and spot trends. How am I doing? Got to wrap it up here pretty soon. Um, but your tracking is where you determine how you maybe need to tweak your business to help it grow. Because everything you're doing here is working with your clients and your customers and your prospects. What Lee had this morning with Google is very important information. Gives you information on things you need and information about your business, about your trade, and where to go get it, and how to help people. Email marketing and social media marketing is how to get those customers and how to maintain those customers and how to track what those customers are doing. You want to encourage people to forward your emails to a friend. Keep it out there. Keep them sharing it with everybody. And you want to thank those people 
Maybe you thank them once a year with an event or an open house at your trade for the local people that are your current customers there. You can't do that with your internet customers, but you can also send them special discounts. You want to keep them engaged. Keep them engaged with your company and with you. Understand unsubscribe request. This is what I'm talking about, and you can't take this personally. And when they unsubscribe, they're usually out of, they, they automatically take them out of your database. So you don't have to worry about maybe them thinking it's your spam when they get it again, because when they unsubscribe, they're out of your database. Why do people unsubscribe? Maybe you're, they're getting too many emails from you. Maybe it's irrelevant content. Maybe you haven't targeted the right audience. Make sure your audience is people that want to do business with you or that can refer you to people that do. But you always want to try to get feedback from those people. This is, this is one of those opportunities. If you fill out this, have them fill out a box of why they're unsubscribing, it gives you an idea. Maybe they're moving out of state. Maybe they had to get rid of their race car and they don't want to be tempted anymore. This is the way you can track and response your checklist and everything that is going on with your email marketing. You know what the trends are. You know what your customers are doing. You know who's forwarding. You know who's sharing. Now, one of the things, and that's about it, and kind of wrapping up, Constant Contact does have a 60-day free trial. You can try it out. Doesn't cost you a dime. You can play with it. If you got any questions about it, you can always call myself or Donna. We'll answer questions. I'll be honest with you. She knows more than I do. I give credit where credit's due. But if you want to try out Constant Contact for 60 days, no charge, no commitments, no contract, let us know. We can sign you up. We can get your, your uh, email account established. And that free trial is good for 60 days or up to 100 people in your database. Once you go over 100 people in your database, Constant Contact's going to want a credit card number, but it's still very inexpensive. We are engagement marketers. We use email, Constant Contact. We use mobile websites and mobile apps. We use social media marketing. Email marketing is one of the most powerful ways to stay in touch with your audience. That's us. If you have any, you have any questions now, we'll open it up for anybody that's got questions. Yes, sir. From your experience, what would you say is a good open rate? Good open rate, and it, it, it depends on your audience, but... I would say even 20 or 30%, sometimes 50%. It depends on how well you've edited your database and kept um, bounces and things like that out. But um, there's an example on one of the presentations we do that somebody sent out 60 people. It's like 25 people opened it, but you had like 10 people that had forwarded it, four people that had clicked through, and that's powerful. But it's going to be a lot more than a direct mail campaign. Direct mail, if you get 1, 2, 3 percent, 1 and 2 percent is normal. Uh, but email marketing should be a lot more because you already have an interest, people that you know are interested in your product or service or your company and what you want. So. Mm-hmm. There's no typical, no. It, it would depend on each individual industry, and, uh, but I don't, yeah. But, uh, you know, there's not a typical dropout rate. I mean, that's just, it, and it'll be different from month to month, just depending on, uh, on the email that uh, you send out and the time, that might be the time of year or just what's happening with the economy. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, variables there. 
Yes, sir. A lot of people with a PowerPoint presentation, and in fact, we've sent it out a couple of times as well. Normally, sometimes we'll send it out when we have uh, everybody's name and everything. We'll send out like a copy of what we just did. The um, sometimes that can be effective, and and sometimes not. I tell you what's really powerful, and uh, part of it has to do with YouTube. If you put, if you take a recording. And man, there's some devices out there now. Y'all write this down. iRig, I-R-I-G. You can get them at Walmart, they're 59 bucks. iRig, it's a microphone that'll plug right into your iPad, your uh, tablet. And man, you can have somebody sitting there holding it and talking to them, and it's like an interview. And they've got a regular microphone, the sound quality is great. I'm not, I'm not getting paid by Walmart, believe me. But uh, it's like a professional interview. And they're 59 bucks. You can plug that in. They do a great. You can sit it up on a little tripod, be in front of it, have the microphone. It's better sound quality and picture quality than your iPhone or your mobile device. It's a neat gadget. But you put that video on your Facebook page, on your website, and you put it behind. Does anybody know what a QR code is? I'm giving you free stuff here, folks. This is good. A QR code is that little square barcode that looks like a bunch of spaghetti and stuff, graffiti, no, no, um, stuff in it, and you scan it with your iPhone or your portable device. You can put a one-hour video behind that QR code. You can put a 10-minute video behind it, and video is powerful. It's very good. Yes, sir? Mm-hmm. When we started, we uh, you know, a lot of trial and error. You know, eventually we're we're a startup company here in the United States. And you know, I had done email marketing years ago. So, you know, I, I was shopping around and I found one of these places you have four hundred dollars and we'll send out fifty thousand emails to you. So sounds good. So we decided to send it out. The fallout. Mm. Shut down our website. We got one spam complaint, and GoDaddy shut it down. Uh, two responses. In doing the research, I found out this company was uh, one uh, lady she was sending to was a leader of a, a, a Girl Scout organization, and she's been dead for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, Constant Contact, you know, jumped in. Yeah. You know, there's, there's something, I forget the exact uh, buzzword, but it has to do with your reputation online. Mm -hmm. And once these little robots and robots out there flag you as a spam, you will. Yeah, we have a very good friend. As a spam. Yeah, we have a very good friend that does reputation marketing. Yeah. And uh, they watch those things and make sure that, that your reputation is intact and your integrity stays there. Good. Yes, sir. It's interesting that you just made that comment because my question actually is similar to that. I, I get the idea of needing to build a, a very robust tech database, but is there a problem, I haven't found there to be a problem, when you get socially, so you you get someone that, that puts it out to their social network, if you will. Right.
Mm -hmm. But I know other people that don't take it so nicely. And, and I've heard the same thing the gentleman just talked about. Once you're identified as a scammer, it is a very difficult process to unring the bell. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and the question was, is, you know, if you have people out there that are sharing your email with their friends, that maybe their friends don't aren't on your list and think it's spam. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when it comes from one of your friends, uh, it's not coming from you, um, that it's not going to reflect on you. They have shared that with their friends. Uh, I think that would only apply in spamming with the email that you actually send out. Uh, when they're sharing it across the world with all of their friends uh, that have friended their site, um, that's not your responsibility. Um, yes, ma'am. Yeah, in fact, uh, I know in, in our account, we've probably got, I'm sorry, the question is, uh, does Constant Contact have a way to differentiate different lists? If you want to send out an email to just your customers, another email to uh, clients, you might have a company that's large enough to where you've got a board of directors, and you want to send out an announcement just to your board of directors. You can do that. You have different lists, and somebody can be on several different lists in your database. But your list can go out and can be targeted to a small group or to a group. So you can have many different lists within your one account. And, uh, and it works great that way, too. Isn't there a limit to the, the number of lists you have on Boy, I hope not, because we got a bunch of them. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's usually will not be viewed as an open. Right. Yeah, because when they, you, you get the emails all the time where it says click here to open pictures or to show, download pictures. When they do that, that's an open. So you can use it as a guideline, but it's not accurate, accurate. You know, you can, you can get the people that will, and sometimes just hitting that download the pictures basically just opens up their logo and their, their whole screen, and that will be an open. But if they don't do that, then it normally does not show up as an open. Yes, sir. Um, I've been using contacts for about five years. Um, but we get busy in the summer, and I don't do it. Mm -hmm. So now here it is. I come to TRI. I get all these great ideas, and I want to send it out. But I'm going to put a couple of big, long articles and five new products mm -hmm. on one email. But you said that's not the way to do it. Well, you can do it. But if you do it, and if you want to put the title of that article and the first sentence or two and then put, click here to read more and let them click to go to that whole article. You don't want to put that, that, whole that whole article is going to be in your archive and it's going to be at a link when they click to it, it's going to go to that article. And if you, there again, you can, if you want us to manage it, you can call Donna and ask her exactly how. You can call customer service, like Ron was talking about, and uh, they'll walk you right through it. But, yeah, you don't want to put that whole article, because everybody's going to read to have this whole article. They might not even know there's anything else down here if they don't scroll down. So you want to keep it really short and sweet right here. Let them click through to read more. They may not want to read this one at the top. They may want to read this one at the bottom that they're not going to scroll all the way down to read. One more question. Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Um, All right. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That's my lovely wife, Donna, my best friend. I also sleep with the boss. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, there again, I applaud everybody for coming out today because this is not the most interesting part of your business, but it's a very important part. And I thank John and Dan for inviting us here to be a part of this today. We will be around uh, after this session. I apologize, we're not going to have time to be here at the end of the day, but Dan knows how to get in touch with us if you have any questions, if you didn't get our email address or phone number. Uh, but thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity.